Ahoy there, Captain Benzi here, coming at you with another video for Eve Echoes. Now, I'm currently sitting in the car waiting to meet my wife when she finishes work, and I thought this would be an interesting time to record today's intro. Now, yes, of course, I'm sitting in the car. My phone is currently in selfie mode recording this, sitting on the steering wheel, so I do apologize for any vibrations and shaking going on. One day, I will eventually set myself up with something like a gimbal in order to stabilize this, but of course, I am doing this entirely from my Asus ROG Phone 3. That's how I roll. But I thought it'd be an interesting time to do an intro for a video just so I can actually showcase and talk about how absolutely stunning and beautiful this place is. This is Bulawayo. I'm living in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe's second largest city. Now, despite it being second, the second largest city in Zimbabwe, and despite me being literally five minutes drive from the city center, that's the view out the window. Actually, at the end of that road down there is probably one of the busier roads into and out of Bulawayo, the main Harare road. Yeah, that's what life's like out here. Now, I mentioned in the past that I'd like to do a series talking about life out here in Zimbabwe, and several of you have said, actually, that'd be pretty cool. We'd like to see that. So I'm looking into it. This is something I would like to do. It's a place I'd like to talk about a bit more and a side of me that I'd like to showcase just that little bit more. But anyway, there is genuinely a reason for me going off on a tangent like this and talking about interesting and unusual things. Because today is Tuesday, which means we're getting patch notes. And today's patch notes are, well, yes, interesting and unusual. There may only be a few patch notes there this week, but their implications are pretty large. There's a lot to talk about and a lot to discuss. And before we go any further, no, I don't normally carry the hat with me everywhere I go. My wife would literally kill me. I just happened to have it in the car because I thought, yeah, let's use this opportunity to record the intro. Anyway, if you enjoyed today's video, let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Ebecos, ding the notification bell to never miss an upload, and of course let me know in the comments section down below what ships and topics you would like to see me cover in future content. I do apologise that ship fitting guides have been pretty slim recently, I kind of decided that what with a big balance patch up and coming, it might be worth holding off on some of the interesting fits that I was looking into, just in case they change. If you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel as well, there are two ways you can do so. Either by joining us over on Patreon, which I do intend to update more frequently with videos and blog posts and cool things like that of life here in Africa. And of course, we have a Redbubble merchandise store where you can buy all kinds of cat skull related gear, whether it's t-shirts, hoodies, stickers, water bottles, clocks, laptop skins, posters, you name it, we got it on that store. Links are all in the description for both of those. Anyway, folks, thanks for listening to me ramble on on this one. Let's to jump into this week's patch notes. So here are the patch notes for the weekly maintenance of the 21st of April 2021. Of course, the server, as usual, will go down for approximately 120 minutes. During this time, we'll be unable to log into the game, and we get 5,000 skill points as a bonus when the servers come back. But what's included in this maintenance? First of all, the optimizations. Number one, updated estimated prices according to current market transaction records. I know this is pretty much a given at this point, but it's great to see that they are still manually doing this. They're still manually watching the market so that they can set the prices for things because this affects everything from jet can audits, standard audit timers, audit timers all over the shop are affected by this, as are insurance prices, the insurance purchase orders, all of that jazz comes straight down to those current market transaction estimated prices prices. So the fact that they are manually observing this is a good thing, and it shows that Netties really are still keeping on top of this. Number two, from April 22nd to April 28th, players on the test server can reset up to 99,999,999 skill points for free. Now, the first thing to take from this is the test server for the May update opens on April the 22nd. We don't have a time yet, but that is this Thursday, two days from now. Huzzah! We are getting the April test server promised for that May balance update, and hopefully this means we're going to be able to try out some really cool things like scanning some of the new ships, some of the new modules, and it's not just the balance updates. Now, remember, test servers tend to take a snapshot of your current situation on live. 
So they'll take a snapshot. You'll see where all of your all of your ships, all of your characters will be transferred across to the test server. Then when you log into the test server, you'll have access to all of your ships, all of your gear and skills, etc. that you had at the point that the, the snapshot was taken. From there, you can then reskill up to 99,999,999 uh, 99, skill points. That's a humongous amount. I'm pretty sure that's actually more than anyone in the game could possibly have earned at this point. I think I'm sitting on about 38, 39 million. So, yeah. I don't know if that's going to be a one-time reset, or if you can, like, if I reset 30, uh, 30 million and then do another 30 million, then another 30 million, something like that. I don't know how that's going to work, but it's nice to know that we do get that reset functionality so that we can try out those new things. If you've only got one character and it's skilled into cruisers, and you want to try out new frigates or try out, like, scanning and things like this, it's nice to know that you can just completely respec to try new things, and that's really, really awesome. I am so hyped for this test server. Yes, I'm going to be making non-stop content for the test server um, when it comes out, so if you're looking for something that's currently on live, unfortunately that is obviously going to be postponed for the time being, and we are going to be pushing everything on the test server because it's only up for a limited period of time. I'm going to be going through this with a fine-tooth comb, going over all the changes, all of the additions, yada, yada, yada. Super mega hype. Number three, now tapping apply on the recommended fittings page, no longer unfits rigs, and I am so happy about this. Now, okay, it says recommended fittings page here. Um, ultimately, I'm hoping this works for the saved ones as well, because I've gone in and I've saved some of the fittings. For example, on my uh, my hurricane character, I've of course saved the up close and personal brawling cane fit, and I've saved the strike cane fit. And much to my chagrin, I discovered that when going from the strike cane fit back to the, uh, the hurricane brawler fit, even though they used the same rigs, when I hit apply on that, it changed all of my top slots, all of my low slots and my mids, and then it removed all of my rigs. A full set of three tier three combat rigs and three tier three engineering rigs. I have never come so close to throwing a $1,000 phone through a window in my life. Like, genuinely, console rage and PC rage is different. You have to unplug stuff if you want to throw that out the window. With a phone, it's much more viable. It's much more realistic. So anything that NetEase can do to stop me having a rage flick of the wrist, the better. <laughs> because that would just be bad. Basically, hopefully this now means that that's fixed, which I'm super on board with. Number four, added a detailed description for monthly login reward late claims requirements. Now, I kind of get this. Basically, if you are, you know, if you miss some of your monthly login rewards and you buy enough Omega to make up the difference, you get the previous claims and things like that. But it can be a little bit confusingly worded. I'm glad to see that NetEase have taken that on board because that is feedback that they've received a few times and they are rewording that just to make it a little bit clearer. Number five, the weekly estimated price listed in market, inventory contacts, or trade locks will be calculated according to the price of the item's materials if a valid estimated price doesn't exist. Now, this is a fairly niche part, and it really is kind of an extension of part one here. It's basically updating estimated prices. This helps with things like making sure that your kill mail reports are accurate, it means that audit timers are accurate, and it means that insurance is accurate to costs as well. That's always a nice little thing to have there. Um, and it just means that if an estimated price doesn't exist, it will look at all the individual pieces and sort of calculate it based on that, which is pretty awesome. Number six, if your corporation citadel access has been revoked and the citadel is in nullsec, items sent to you will now be delivered to the nearest ITC. Now, this isn't as big a thing as it might may first appear because, you know, it's not like you're going to have all your stuff jump, dumped at Jita. There are some nullsec null ITCs, but it's nice to know that if, for example, you're in a corporation or an alliance, if you're in an alliance that has a few of the citadels and they decide that they're going to restrict access to some of them to just a particular alliance, you're not going to suddenly lose access completely to anything that was in there. I've heard horror stories of people having to basically um, transfer items across to friends who are in that, still have access to that citadel, so that that friend can then ferry all of the gear out. That's a horrific situation to be in, and I'm super glad that that's fixed. Although, to me, admittedly, this should probably be more a bug fix than a new feature. 
Number six, number seven. Number seven, I, w I, I know numbers, me. After redeeming items from the Corporation Delivery Hangar, you can view the player who performed the action, the redeemed item, and the station involved in the wallet payment log. Ha freaking czar. Like, this, this is something that is so long overdue in the game. I've been told, or I've spoken to the devs myself about this one, and said, look, you know, this is a big problem. People who can go into a corporation hangar and just absolutely blitz it dry. You may remember that um, early on in its life cycle, um, Cat Skull lost entire hangers full of loot. We lost several billion isk worth of stuff back when billions were big, big Big numbers, and it really, really hurts us. The collapse of the Church of Spodgemain, it's referred to in the Catskull Annals of History. Um, but ultimately, now we would actually just be able to open up the log and go, ah, ha, okay, why did you take all of that stuff out of the log? You have a privileged position. Why are you taking things that you're not supposed to be taking? What possible purpose do you have for taking those things as well? It adds a bit of accountability into corporations, which I'm all for. Because it means that, yeah, okay, if someone wants to drain your hangar and then run off with all the goods, they still can. Everyone knows that famous Eve story. Um, but at the same token, if you've just got an officer who perhaps is leeching a little bit more than they should, you can keep an eye on it as the corporation executor, etc., in order to actually, you know, keep an eye on what, what goods are going in. No one wants to be donating stuff to Corp and finding that it's not going to the right place, that one of your officers just happens to be skimming a bit off the side. Useful. Very, very ha glad to have that in position now. Number eight, a second contract can only be created after the first one has been confirmed by the system. This is, again, fairly niche, and it feels more like a bug fix than a new optimization, but hey, we're not going to uh, pick, pick the nits too much here. Basically, this meant that if, for example, you were trying to send someone 10,000 of a particular, you know, resource or whatever, um, you hit send on it and the, 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 your, your system, your internet seems to lag out and you hit send on it again, you're not going to have accidentally sent them 20,000 and then that, you know, person on the other end just goes, no, I only received one by order and I only received one contract. Now it will actually wait for the first one to be completely accepted by the system and in place before you can up a, put up a second contract. It just helps remove some of the errors that can be caused by things like lag or server ticks and just interesting situations like that. Again, all for that. Number nine, added a new corporation industry mechanic. Now, players with the following permissions, corporation industry and corporation hangar, can initiate industrial manufacturing or reverse engineering jobs directly using materials in corporation hangars. Now, this was what I did a video on yesterday, and it's super exciting for folks who are in a corporation um, and doing, like, maybe shipbuilding, you know, in, in a corporation shipyard, doing, like, a doctrine shipbuilding, that kind of thing. Because it means that the higher-ups can actually just set orders, um, and those guys can just use corporation resources, corporation isk, corporation minerals, corporation blueprints, yada, 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 to create what they need to, and still make a profit off it which is really, really cool. This is a huge change, and I forgot to mention in yesterday's video, actually, I put it in the description, and some of you did notice, Geek of Forta did a fantastic video explaining all of this as well. I do recommend checking that one out, so I'm going to give a shout-out here. I'm going to put a link up on screen if I remember to, and I will put one in the description down below as well to go check out that video if you haven't already checked out yesterday's video of mine as well on how this corporation industry kind of works. It's super exciting. It's a good time now, you know, moving forward, big helps here for industrialists. Finally then, number 10. A prompt will now pop up when the maximum number of damaged hulls is not used during reverse engineering. This, I think, is, you know, a fair point as well, that sometimes, you know, you want to be using multiple hulls to get the highest percentage possible, and if you're just sort of tapping through to set as many jobs as possible, it kind of sucks to only use one hull, um, plus all the esk, and then have a timer set that probably isn't going to go ahead just because you're tapping a little bit too fast. It's that sort of, that user protection, and I'm kind of all for this in games. I know a lot of people are like, well, if you're tapping that fast, then you deserve to, you know, make the mistakes and pay for them. But it can really suck. And I think anything that just, you know, punishes players for, you know, being enthusiastic about their playstyle probably isn't a good mechanic to have. So having something that adds a layer of protection against that, I'm all for it. Finally, then, let's have a look. I've said finally twice, haven't I? Let's have a look at the bug fixes. There are three of these. 
Number one, fixed an issue where the corporation recruitment page wouldn't display any info after leaving a corporation. Well, if you come join Cat, Skull and Void, you don't have to worry about leaving a corporation because you're going to have such a great time with us. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. But ultimately, I get this. It's, it, it does suck that if you are in a group that you're not enjoying or things have gone a bit dead, you leave a corporation and suddenly, oh no, the game's glitched out. Yeah, glad that they fixed that. Number two, fixed an issue where players would be directed to the same channel they created when logging in with different characters from the same account. Um, the, the same channel they created? I'm assuming we're talking chat channels here? Um, it, I'm, I'm not sure entirely what the issue is there. It's worded a little bit vaguely. Players would be directed to the same channel, same chat channel we assume, they created when logging in with different characters from the same account. Is that an issue? I suppose it kind of is, because if you've got characters in different corporations, you don't necessarily want them all joining into different uh, chats and things like that. Corporate espionage. Mmm. Number three. Fix an issue where the ships with the ability to switch modes could not be placed back in the corporation hangar after assembly. Yeah, this is this is an interesting one. Um, take out something like a scythe or a sniper ship. Um, something that has like recharge mode or sniper mode there were sometimes situations where you then couldn't put that ship back in the hangar which really sucks when you're borrowing a ship for a call to arms like a scythe for example or some other kind of logistics ship and when you're done with it you want to put it back in the hangar because okay that was cool but you're probably not going to be at the next call to arms so someone else can probably make use for it oh no why won't the corporation hangar take it back do i have to contract this to someone now how do i do yeah now it's just been fixed awesome thank you very much netties for that one there so I think the two biggest takeaways here are we're getting that corporation industry mechanic is being added to the game now, plus we're getting the uh, the April test server for the May update on the 22nd of April. And again, I'm going to say it, I could not be more hype for this if I tried. My wife is probably sitting here listening to this going, yeah, I cannot wait for this test server to be over so that Benzi can shut the heck up about it. Because it is, oh, I'm sitting here planning everything. I, I have no idea even what's guaranteed to be in here yet. I don't know any of the balance changes. I'm assuming scanning's gonna be in, but what if it's not? What ships are going to be added? I'm still planning a ton of content and just going crazy waiting for this to happen and I'm so glad we now have a date at long last. Anyway folks, those are my thoughts and opinions here regarding the balance patch. It is 2021, this is the internet I still have to say. These are my thoughts and opinions, it's cool if you have your own thoughts and opinions, let's talk about them like friends in the comment section down below without berating the ever-living crap out of each other. Let's talk to each other with respect, friendship and kindness because there is no better ship in Eve Echoes than friendship. Anyway, let me know your thoughts and opinions politely in the comment section down below. Otherwise, folks, happy sailing and see you in New Eden.